Hey, what's up, Gamers Color Mystic? I am here today in my Avalon Outlaws Refuge to talk to you all about a pretty much more serious subject than I usually do. So, uh, I'm not going to be my usual jovial, foolish type self because this is a serious subject matter. And I really want to handle it for you as best as I can. As you all know, whenever I do videos, I, I try to be fun or helpful or at least, you know, do something amusing. But if you're here watching this, you're probably not very amused because if you're here watching this video, you more than likely have received one of these. That's right, you have been banned. Maybe you know why, maybe you don't know why, but we'll get that to that in a minute. I know it sucks to be banned. Once a long time ago, I was banned, so I feel your pain. I understand what it is to have invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, and in some cases, a lot of money into a wizard only to have it all wiped away. I started this game as a life wizard. I played that wizard for, oh gosh, six, seven years. And something went on and I got banned. Luckily mine wasn't a permanent IP ban and I was able to replay it and restart it again. And if it wasn't for my YouTube channel at the time, I might not have done it. Honestly, I might not have done it because it is heartbreaking to lose all that stuff once you've worked and slaved and sweated and wiped and groaned and get it. All right, now that we've <laughs> got through the introduction of the banning, let's first, I don't want to be like big time old papa professor know-it-all and like cover everything in great detail. So I'm going to just touch over the fine points. And if I skip over something that, uh, that applies to you, sorry, by all means, hey, feel free to get a hold of me in the comments and say, well, this happened to me. By all means, do that. I've got to tell you all before I start, guys, I do not work for King's Isle, okay? I do not work for King's Isle. As such, I do not have a whole lot of pull or say in what they do or why they do it. Okay, so if you're coming to this video looking to have me talk to King's Isle for you and get you unbanned or unmuted or un whatever it was that you were done, I can't. Okay. In extreme cases, I could talk to somebody, but my opinion doesn't really make that much of a difference. I am a YouTuber. I am not a King's Isle employee. I want to get that straight with y'all off the bat, make this an honest video as much as I possibly can. In turn, while you're listening to this video, I want you to be honest with, you don't have to be honest even with me. Be honest with yourself. Let's talk about bands first. Usually, not always, I'll be the first to admit it. Usually, but not always, King's Isle will ban you for a reason. So first and foremost, even if you're not honest with me, be honest with yourself. Is there any reason that you, or something you might have done, something you might have said, you know, maybe you got ticked off of PvP and you called somebody an ass or something along those lines. Is there any reason that you can think of that you got banned? Let's cover some reasons for getting banned legitimately real quick. And see what you can do about those things. See if you can get yourself unbanned. For, for some types of bans and for some reasons of bans, it's very simple to get yourself unbanned. So there is a little bit of hope. First things first, the first type of ban. And I say this right off the bat too, because this is an important factor to consider. It is probably the most important factor to consider. King's Isle and Wizard 101. Guys, I know that Kings Isle presents themselves as the fan-friendly, fun, uh, jovial Uncle George kind of thing going on here. And for the most part, that's true so long as the rules are being obeyed. But they have rules in place, and if the rules are disobeyed, you'll find out very quickly. Uncle Jovial Uncle George is all well and good, but they are. At the beginning of the day, at lunchtime, and at the end of the day, they are a business. Okay, They are a business whose goal whose aim is no different than any other business, and that is to make money, okay? That is where it begins and where it ends. If there's an issue with a player, that freaking bird is getting on my nerves. I'm going to have to get away from it. If there is an issue where their income or their livelihood is concerned, you'll stay banned, okay? That's just all there is to it. You can't blame them for it. Because that's what they do. They are a business. They are here to make money, to provide some fun. But if they can't provide that fun and make their profit, well, they will look after their profit first. 
That's what they do. That's what all companies do. They are not evil. They are not the bad guy necessarily. Um, they are not out to get you necessarily, but they are a business and they will look out after their own interest. Okay, I've said that first. All right, now let's get to the types of bands that I'm talking about. And this is a common band and it was really actually fairly easy to lift this band. The first type of band I'm going to talk about is a financial band. What usually happens in the case of a financial ban is there is some illegitimate credit card used, there is some illegitimate gift card used, either there's some kind of a fraud or a theft or something like that going on, and if they catch it, they'll ban you. Okay, because again, they are talking about their profits, they're talking about the possibility that someone's used a stolen credit card, which is fraud, which is highly illegal. Okay, now it may be that, and it may just be that, oh, well, you borrowed mom's credit card to pay for your membership, and mom didn't know about it, and when she's seen it on her bill, she's like, hey, credit card company, this is a bunch of bull crap. Why is this on my bill? Take that off. And the credit card company will reverse those charges, and whenever that happens, King's Eye will ban you because, well, now you're playing on time that you, don't, you didn't really buy or didn't really own. Okay, if you have a financial ban like that, if you have recently bought a bunch of crowns, because crowns will have the same with crowns, if you have recently had any kind of financial transaction with them and you find yourself banned, that's your first step. That's where you go, the first step. See if whatever payment was made through whatever means is still clear and legit. If it is, you or the cardholder, most, most likely the cardholder, because that's who they want to talk to, will have to email and or call King's Isle directly. Now, you may have not even gotten a notice as to why you got banned. A lot of that is happening a lot more these days. It used to be that you could get an email with your ban saying why you got banned to make little things a little bit more clear. But it seems like a lot of times these days there's so much banning going on that some of those emails either get in a spam folder or... Maybe they get overlooked or what have you, and you don't find or see an email as to why you got banned. But think about what the possible reasons were that you could have gotten banned. And financial is one of the most common ones. Okay, If there's been any kind of transaction recently, you bought crowns on your account, or your parents bought crowns on your account, or you got a membership card, or any kind of financial change, anything that changes your account financially, and you just got banned, that's more than likely the cause. And you'll want to start there first. Okay, other types of bands. <coughs> um, you have <laughs> you have been warned a bunch of times about some of the actions and language that you take in game. And one day you wake up and find yourself banned. Well, guys, that's a tough one because you're very more than likely to stay banned on that one. You can contact them. You can, hey, I'll do better, that kind of thing. And maybe you'll get a sympathetic ear. It's possible, but I have to be straight with you here. It is not likely that you will get out of a ban like that. If you have, if you have done something malicious and direct, they will more, li more than likely ban you, and not only ban you, but IP perma ban you to where you can't start another account. Blue of uh, Dakota, Dakota Earthhorn, had a long time go around with King's Isle about things that he did whenever he, whenever he was a younger person and maybe a little more confident and a little bit less uh, worried about the consequences. And that stuck with him. That stuck with him to where he just got banned again during this mass banning that they had. But we're going to talk about the mass banning towards, towards the middle or end of this video. All right. So if you've done something malicious or direct... Um, you know, racial slurs are a bad one. Threatening to kill somebody is a, is a definite bad one. Threatening to sexually assault someone is a definite bad one. They won't mute you for that. They will ban you. Okay, so that's not crap that you want to do unless you're looking to get banned. Really, it's not. All right, another type of ban, and this one, <laughs> this is a very interesting one here. You see these two little items? This is the glowing mushroom, and this is the basket of tomatoes. These two items are among the most dangerous items in Wizard 101. As a matter of fact, this little blue mushroom is just about like a giant grenade that went off a long time ago and it got a bunch of people banned. The third type of ban is the exploit ban. This, had, this has to do with gardening or 
item pickup or any kind of third-party cheats that you use in the game, anything like that, okay? King's Isle does not take kindly to exploit bans. Some of the exploit bans I know of have to do, for instance, with this mushroom here. Whenever Azteca came out, this mushroom is sitting on the porch of one of the pyramids near the floating mountains. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's not near, it's, uh, near the... Oh... <laughs> Anyhow, it's in Aztec. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I, I know what it is. I just can't pull it to my mouth. Anyway, this mushroom got more people banned. And it wasn't entirely the player's fault. It was, but it wasn't. What happened with this mushroom is... You're meant to pick one up as a housing item because it was a cool little mushroom and they intended you to put one in your house. Somewhere along the lines, the devs missed, missed the uh, despawn of the mushroom. And what would happen was you could pick up the mushroom and it wouldn't despawn. You could pick up another mushroom and it wouldn't despawn. And you could pick up another one. And basically, you could pick them up infinitely and it wouldn't despawn. Some YouTubers made the mistake of making a video about this exploit. And that means that a lot of people who watch those YouTube videos went and did the exploit. In fact, sometimes to the tune of tens of thousands of pickups. Somebody at King's Isle saw this and they lost, <laughs> they lost their cool. They straight started, they slam banned a bunch of people over that mushroom and over that exploit. On one side of the coin, it was King's Isle's fault for not making sure that program was correct. But on the other side of the coin, no one forced the players to pick up that mushroom over and over and over again. They just saw an easy way to a bunch of gold, didn't see anything wrong with it, and did that. They exploited a game glitch. And there was, oh my God, there was, there was a shovel boatload of bans over that. Some, of people, some people got unbanned, the ones who did it less, but some people who did it in the tens of or thousands or tens of thousands of times are banned to this day. So... A good guideline for this type of ban, the exploit ban, is if you think it's wrong, if you think maybe you ought not to be doing it, you probably ought not to be doing it. The tomato basket was the same way, the same general thing. It was an exploit that a lot of people got banned over, picking up bunches and bunches and bunches of them, and that caused problems. King Zile, again, does not like that kind of thing. They're a business, while this had nothing to do with making money, it had to do with players exploiting a glitch to make things unnecessarily easier for them than was intended. Another type of ban along the exploit lines was whenever gardening first came out, there was a glitch where you could harvest an elder plant over and over and over again. And that's why gardening was changed to what it is today. Okay, they harvested, harvested that, their plant, their elder plants over and over and over again and had infinite mega snacks and found out that the ban hammer will drop for that. A bunch of people got banned over the garden, the, el the elder plant gardening exploit. Okay, so a general rule for this, for the, ban the exploit ban, guys, if you see something going on there and you think, it's, uh, you think it's not quite right, even if you try it once or twice, that might not be so bad, do not slam it. Do not do it 10,000 times. Now, before I get super long-winded all in one video about the banning, muting, and spam reporting thing, I'm going to end this one up as a part one, part two thing. I could probably talk about this for hours. There's so much of it that needs to be discussed. There really is. I mean, there's too many good players getting outed whenever they don't need to be. So I'm going to make this the end of part one, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, a good heart smash, as well as subscribe and share. I would love to see more of you around here. Until next time, this is Skull Mystic reminding you that whatever else you do, always love the game. Peace. Hey, what's up, Gamer Skull Mystic? Welcome back to part two of the Ban Hammer. What's up with that? Bans, mutes, and spam reports, and what to do about it. In the last video, I covered up a bunch of the reasons for the bans, and I'm sure you've seen that video by now. So let's go ahead now and get back into part two of this and get all the rest.